everybody welcome back to a training of the N172 in this part we're gonna see how the software work let's start by creating a project identify how can get access to the help and how the variables work inside the software so first when we install the software we can see in our desktop this icon that icon took us to the folder which has the EcoStruction Machine Expert HVAC installer and the EcoStruction Machine Expert HVAC only. There is a huge difference between both parts of the software. The installer can be considered as a manager that can have many projects, okay, and the EcoStruction Machine Expert HVAC is only one project. Let me show you this. Here we can see the access to the folder, the installer, and the HBAC application. Let's start with the installer, which is focused when you have in your machine or in your process more than one PLC. So you can have everything in one folder. Let's open the installer here, you can see that we can select between all these devices. We're going to select what we have in our demo case, the controller, and I'm going to use the display. The first thing that we need to do is to save this. So save I'm gonna select this okay model 2 save now I'm gonna get access to this folder it's training model 2 we can see here this is the extension for the installer now if you can see here there is nothing else just the installer so we need to create the instance for this PLC so we open this PLC we do not have any path if we just click on open the application will be created so um, machine um, da -da. okay and now it opens the ecosystem machine after HBIC as we will open this one if we take a look into the model it creates a folder with this information and this is the project for the EcoStructure Machine Expert HVAC for this controller only. So let's back to the presentation. This is all the possibilities that we have when we are in the installer. Okay, we can see the name of the controller we can set the communication to communicate and download the application to the controller, some defaults, configuration, and other operation, like the firmware, the FTP, and the download application. Let's continue with this one. We see how to save the project. How to create the application that will link to the EcoStruction Machine Expert HBAC only, not installer. So let me just explain a little bit more this part. So in the top part, we have configuration, programming, display, and commissioning tabs to configure our controller. 
the first one, which is the configuration, is all related to the hardware of the controller. We will see that in more details. We have the programming. When we develop the code for the controller, the display that is oriented to program the embedded display of the controller, even if your controller doesn't have or have the display, is the scene application, which is good, and the commissioning to get access to the BIOS parameter of the controller. Okay, in the top part, we can see that we can create a new project, open a project, save the project, compile everything, okay, and then download all. So, this is good. If we are only going to compile the programming part, we just click on here, compile the PLC. But if we want to compile everything, we need to use this one at the top. Continue with the presentation. This is something good. When we finish our machine, it is good to perform a complete download so we can download all the parameters to start with the test of the machine. Something very useful here, the help. When you go to the help, <laughs> programming help index, we can get access to the help of the software. To the hardware, software, and the libraries and TBDAs. So, in the configuration tab, in this part we're going to make focus in here. So, when we open the configuration and we see the resources here, we can see all related to the hardware. So, create menus, which is this part. It, the menus are going to help us to uh, divide the information that we're going to see later, how to get access easily to the information when we are in the commissioning tab. In IO mappings, when we can define the IOs of the controller, we can define the memory address for deeper status and the BIOS parameter, the initial, the initial configuration of our machine. Now let's start with the variables types that we are able to configure in the configuration tab. We have the IO mapping, EEPROM parameters, status, enums, and view of parameters. This one, local and global variables, are configured in the programming tab. So we will focus in those ones. In the IO mapping, we have the local. They are only for the PLCs, okay, the small and the bigger one. This is the visualization. And the IO mappings for field, which is the expansion modules. This is not only for this family, but in this case, we're going to cover this. So let me show you. If we go to the local, we are able to see the IOs oriented to this controller. But if you go to field, we just need to add the variables here, and then we need to configure that in the expansions. If you use this, let me show you. We can select the expansion of, that we are going to work with. Okay, but let's cover that later. We just need to define the variables that we're going to use in the field. So now the configuration of the variables that we're going to use to communicate to other devices or store information in the controller. We have in the Modbus object menu, even parameters. Let me show you in the software, open parameters. With this, we can add the variables 
okay for example temperature at some point Oop. to change language to change that again there we go here we can see the address the name and the type variable in this case I'm going to use real uh, real for this we can use the minimum and maximum value and we can link this to another variable okay for example if I want to use min and max I can select min and max and set a default value for example this uh, Okay, now something important here is the address of the variables. We can make mistakes here. This is a real variable and it took two words. So in order to make this work, we can use this operation recalc and the address will be changed. Okay, Sim simple. The same applies to the status. Okay, we can create new variables. Indication mm, actual temperature. And I can assign this. Okay, it's the same. But the difference between the EPRUN and the status is that the EPRUN is stored information after we remove the power supply of the equipment and the status no. Here, the same explanation. Okay, good. And how how can we identify which is the right group for each variable? Well, it's simple. For the EEPROM, everything related to the configuration of our machine. And for variables that we want to be addresses, okay, that for example, we want to uh, get access remotely to those variables those values need an address and for the status everything related to indicators for example actual temperature humidity or KPIs then we have the BIOS parameters let me show you in this version of the software all the BIOS parameters that we have for example we have for the analog input configuration we can select between all these configuration what we want in this case of this PLC the configuration must be in pairs so if we configure analog input 1 as digital input the analog input 2 must be digital input also we have the calibrations we have everything regarding to the configuration of the communication you can see here the mode bus, the can, the mode bus again, but the plugin, the communication model. And if we go under, we can see here the IP address. So in this example, use this. And this is the same as default, but I'm going to change it anyway. Good. So we need configurations. So this is all regarding the BIOS parameter. And when we perform a full download, the software is going to ask, ask us if we want to download these parameters. So my recommendation for this is always to configure all the communications variables 
before I start with the project. Okay, it will be much simpler later. And we avoid any mistake that, for example, I'm not able to communicate. Okay, why? Because we haven't defined anything in this part. So something important here is the enums, which allowed us to uh, have a string value instead of a numeric value. It is much simpler to identify okay, and read the program. For example, here, if we perform right click and add an enum, in this case, I have add a enum as a motor, for example, with these variables. When the value is zero, we can see an off. When it's one, we can see on. When it's two, we can see fail. And in the status on the apron, when we define the starter type, we don't need to define as the standard integer or real, which is defined as the enum. And we can see here the default value it changed instead of c. 0, 1, 2, etc. We see the string value. And this is something important that we take from the HBAC training. You can see here below the link. This is um, how the how is the behavior of the variables inside the PLC. We can see that the apron and the status have a mobile address as the BIOS parameters and here the big difference between the apron and the status it doesn't retain the value after we remove the power supply and they are available in all the projects okay something important when we start naming the variables is to follow to follow an example, okay, and style. This is not mandatory, but it's useful when we want to share the program to another college, and we can understand what the code means. Okay, I leave you in the folders of the training this document to give you an example of how we can name the variables. For example, if we are going to use a boolean, we start with the prefix x. If we're going to use a real variable, we start with the prefix r. And then we can start with the underscore, and then we can define all the variables in there. It's a good way to start having a rule for naming.